Hello and welcome to a lesson on adding and subtracting decimals. Um, so when we're adding and subtracting decimals, it's really just like adding and subtracting whole numbers. What we want to do is add or subtract the digits that are in corresponding place values. So when we add, uh, we add the digits in corresponding place values, and of course this is going to work from right to left, just like with whole numbers. And we do want to make sure that we're carrying over if we end up with uh, sum that is bigger than um, bigger than 9, so 10 or more. So we'll carry when it's necessary. And with subtraction the same. Okay, when we subtract, we subtract digits that are in corresponding place values. Again, working from right to left. And if we have something um, larger to subtract, then we may have to borrow. So borrowing when necessary. Okay, so adding and carrying and subtracting and borrowing, just like with whole numbers, just make sure all the corresponding place values, all the digits in those corresponding place values are lined up. And to make sure that the place values correspond, to make sure all the digits are aligned appropriately, we're going to line up the decimal points. If we line up the decimal points vertically, we will ensure that our place values correspond. And it's also helpful in these types of problems to estimate before we do any work. You know, estimate our decimal values to a whole number, maybe to the nearest ones or tens place, depending on the size of the number, and kind of uh, get a gauge of what we're working toward before. And also know that we have technology, calculators or Desmos, that can verify our work. Okay, so let's try a few of these out. For example, if we wanted to add 23.85 and 1.604. Just eyeballing this, I would say that's pretty close to 24. And then 1.6 is pretty close to 2. So I know I'm going to be looking for a sum that is somewhere near 26. Okay, so if I get an answer that's really far off from 26, I know I, I did something wrong. Okay, so let's try this out. We have 23.85, and I want to add that with 1.604. So I want to line this up 1.604 so that my decimal points align. And then again, that will guarantee that my ones match up, my tenths, my hundredths match up. And so I'm going to be adding these two numbers. Now notice the little gap over here. Um, there's nothing to add to the four, but remember we can add zeros to our decimals, the end of our decimal, and not change the value of that decimal. So if we have um, some holes in our number, let's just put some zeros to, to make sure we have things to actually correspond. Now we're just going to add, just like with whole numbers. So we start with the zero plus four, which is four. Nothing to carry there. And then five plus zero makes five. And then here, when we add 8 and 6, we get 14. Now, I can't put a two-digit number in one-digit spot. So 14 means we're going to have 4 here, and we're going to carry 1 over to the next place value. And then we add the 1, 3, and 1, which makes 5. And then 2, and again, if we want to, to put a 0 in that spot, um, 2 plus nothing below it is going to give me a result of 2 there. And then we want to make sure that the decimal stays in the same spot as well. So our decimal is going to be right in between those numbers. And so our result here is 25.454. And again, that's pretty close to the 26 I had estimated it in the beginning. And as always, we have technology that we could use to verify our work. And you would literally just type this in 23.85 added to 1.604 to confirm 25.454 is the correct result. Okay, let's try that again. I've got three digits to add here. So 763.7651 and then 22.001 and then 43.89. Carefully making sure all of our digits are aligning there. And I'm going to go ahead and stick some zeros here. And I'm going to stick some zeros here and here so that I've got three, 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 and three numbers all the way across there, everything lining up. Okay, so back to this first column one, zero, and zero gives us a sum of one. In the second column here, 5, 1, and 0 gives us a sum of 6. In the third column, 9 and 0 and 6 is going to be 15. And so that's going to be 
5 with a 1 to carry over. There's our 15. And now 1, 7, 0, and 8. That's going to be 8 and 8, which is 16. So we're going to put a 6, whoops, I need my pin, a 6 and carry the 1. And then we have here 1 and 3 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 3 makes 9 in that spot. And next column, 6, 2, and 4. 6 and 2 is 8, and 4 is going to make 12, so I'm going to have to carry. And again, I need my pen. So 12, so it's 2, carry the 1. And then lastly, 7, 1, 0, and 0 is going to give me 8. And I can't go back and forth very well here. And now we just want to make sure we carry our decimal down. And so there it is, 829.6561. And I, I forgot to estimate here, but this should make sense. This is about 764. If I added 22, that would be 786. And if I added, this is almost 44. So that's going to be about 700, or that's carry the one, about 830. Yeah, it's pretty close, 29.6561. So seems like a reasonable enough answer. And again, you could use technology to verify, but I'm pretty confident in 829.6561 for our result. Okay, now if you find yourself needing to write the numbers a little bit bigger so you can space them out and keep them all clear, that's good. Um, you know, if you're working on an iPad like I am, then the highlighting and erasing is, is also helpful. Alright, so here's another one. We are going to try to add this time 45 and 2.06. Now notice the 45 doesn't even have a decimal. When it's not there, it's because the decimal part is zero. So our decimal always belongs after the ones place. And if we want to stick some zeros in there, let me change colors. Decimal belongs here, and I could put some zeros afterward. Um, so if you have a whole number and you don't see the decimal, the decimal is after the ones place. So when we go to add these numbers, maybe you want to put a zero here as well. When we go to add these, the zero and six gives us six. The zero and zero is going to give us a zero. The five and two is going to give us seven. And the four and zero is going to give us four. And the decimal place we don't want to move. And so that's going to stay right there. And 47 plus a, a little more than 2, or 45 plus a little more than 2 makes a little more than 47. So again, a perfectly reasonable answer there. So 47.06 is our result. Okay? Now that we've got some addition underneath the belt there, let's try some subtraction. Again, it's, it's a good idea to estimate. So this is about 35. And this is, I don't know, pretty close to 24. So if I was to subtract those, I'm looking for a difference that's around 11. Okay, so just ballparking, I'm looking for something close to 11 in that ballpark. So let's try this out here. We've got 35.218, and we want to subtract 23.65. And again, I'm going to put a zero here. So now we're going to subtract, and we're going to borrow along the way if we need to. So 8 minus 0. That's no big deal. We're going to have 8 there. Now in the next column, I can't take 5 away from 1. So this is a place where I'm going to have to borrow. So I'm going to change colors here. Borrow from the 2, and I'm going to take a, a 10 all the, or over to the next spot. So that gives me 11, from which I am subtracting 5. So now it's 11 minus 5, which is going to give me 6 in that spot. So a 6 here. And now I have 1, and I'm trying to take 6 away, and that's not going to happen. So I'm going to have to borrow again. So I borrow from the 5, make it 4, bring 10 over. So now here it's 11 minus the 6, which is going to leave me 5. And now I have here 4 minus the 3, which is 1. Oops. And then in the last column here, 3 minus the 2, which again is 1. And then don't make, make sure you don't lose the decimal, which is going to be right there. So 11.568 is pretty close to what I had estimated. So I'm going to say again 11.568 with some confidence is our result. But as always, you can use your technology. So just, just so you can see it, right? pretty easy to check our work. 35.218 minus 23.65 is 11.568. Okay? 
Let's just try a couple more to make sure we're good. So we have here 3.5 and we want to subtract 0 0.068. And I'm going to have to put some zeros in here to, to try to subtract, make sure all, I, all my place values are lined up. And I'm going to have to do some borrowing. So I can't take 8 from 0. So I've got to go all the way to the 5. When I borrow from 5, it becomes a 4. And in the next place value, I end up with 10. Well, I'm going to have to borrow from 10, make it 9, and make the next place value 10. So now I can subtract. The 10 minus 8 is going to leave me 2. The 9 minus the 6 is going to leave me 3. The 4 minus the 0 is going to leave me 4. And the 3 minus the 0 is going to leave me 3. And then let's not lose the decimal. It's supposed to be right there. And oh, I forgot to estimate again. But we've got 3.5. We're taking away a number that's less than 1. So our answer should be still pretty close to 3.5. And it is. So 3.432. I am pretty confident in that answer. OK. And I got one last one for us to try. So let me not forget to estimate this time. I've got 85, and I'm taking away just over 17. So what I'm looking at here is something that's going to be a little less than 68, because I'm going to take away a little more than the 17, but 68 approximately. Okay? So we have a, an idea of where we're headed here. So I have 85, and I want to subtract 17 point, almost put one through one, point three one. I'm going to have to add my decimal right after my whole number and a couple of zeros, which means I'm going to have to subtract. Um, I mean, I have to borrow in order to subtract. So 5 becomes a 4, making this 10. 10 becomes a 9, so that this is 10. And now 10 minus 1 is 9 here. And 9 minus 3 is going to be 6 here. And then I cannot um, take, in this column, 7 from 4. So I'm going to borrow from, oops, I'm going to borrow from 8, make it 7, and then this becomes a 14. So now it's 14 minus 7, and 14 minus 7 is 7. And lastly, 7 minus 1, which is going to be 6. So we said 68, a little less, and there it is, 67.69. Let's just make sure we get the decimal in that right spot. And so our result here, 67.69, which we estimated pretty closely to that. And again, calculator decimals could be used to confirm that work. OK, so that's it. Adding and subtracting decimals, making sure you align the digits. Um, carry when necessary if it's addition and borrow when necessary if it's subtraction and then if you have you know some spots missing you got to put some zeros in there as placeholders uh, or if you have a whole number make sure your decimal is right after the ones spot all right so you've got some practice to try this out and as always if you need some extra help just reach out all right take care